Hey there, guys. How you doing today? Well, I hope. Okay, today I'm going to talk about um, something I just read, uh, actually today, on a blog, a Van Dweller's blog. And they talked about the two most common reasons people quit van life or living in a van. So I just had dinner here, Taza Falafel House. This is in New Westminster, British Columbia. And it was pretty good actually. You got a for six fifty, you got a fairly large falafel. And um there's nothing wrong with it. it tasted good to me. And uh good good price. I'd go back there again for sure. And then for a beverage I thought, uh oh, seven eleven. I know what that means. I'm gonna get a Slurpee. So I got this, uh, what kind of flavor is this? Like a mocha cappuccino chocolate, something or other. Not a bad deal. So I was looking after my kids at her, uh, at my ex-wife's condo yesterday. And man, I gotta tell you guys, this, three things happened. It was like, it was like the perfect storm. First of all, my daughter, who's four, decides it's a good idea to put a huge wad of toilet paper into the bathroom sink. And she just plugged it and plugged it and plugged it. She kept just sticking it in, apparently. And uh, so, you know, I'm there, I'm responsible. I should have been watching her more closely. And uh, I didn't notice. So I got a coat hanger and I tried to unplug the, the sink and then what do I do I poke a hole through the pipe because there's, there's a, like a 40 year old building and the, I think those pipes are probably original but I put the coat hanger right through the little p-trap of the plumbing plumbing pipe so now there's water pouring out the bottom I go what the heck's that sound and all of a sudden I see water going on the floor I go, uh oh <laughs> it's not my place <laughs> So I got this painting tray and I stuck it under there and I got all the water and cleaned it all up and um, you know I'm gonna fix it for her. I I told her I would get uh, I went to Home Depot and got a replacement pipe thing and I'm gonna put it in I have to do that tomorrow night. So that's one thing. Second thing is my son stepped on my glasses and bent them all the crap. So I bent them back into place, but. I don't know, do they look straight to you? Straight-ish. So that was fun. And then thirdly, I picked my son up from school and we come back into the condo and somehow the cat got out and my son didn't notice. He was the last one coming in. And uh, basically the cat was locked out of the apartment for like three hours. And I got a knock on the door and one of the neighbors said, oh, your cat's in the hallway. <laughs> Oops. So meanwhile, the cat was like freaked out because she was out in the hallway for three hours, poor thing. And she had ripped up the carpet in front of the, the little threshold thing from the carpet to the laminate flooring. And I managed to just lift up the little metal piece that, that divides the two and stick the ripped up carpet underneath and put it down. Man, so three things that kind of went over, went uh, crazy yesterday. But, eh, that's the way she goes, I guess. So according to this blog, there are two reasons that people decide that the van life isn't for them. The first reason is because they find it stressful looking for a place to park. The second reason is uh, loneliness. Now, if you're a person traveling on the open road, like a guy, like Nomadic Fanatic, for example, um, I could see how those things could be true. I could see how it'd be, be stressful um, looking for a place to park that huge RV. Of course, there's always the Walmarts in the States especially. Um, 
and I could see how it would be lonely, you know, not having people that you talk to on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, I could see how those could be true. However, I would, I don't know if I'd ever recommend living on the open road in a van just traveling around all the time. I mean, I, it would be fun for like to go on a trip for a couple months or something. But to do it as a lifestyle for the rest of your life, eh, I don't think I would do it. And one of those reasons specifically, and I would think it's the loss of connection to people um, or loneliness, if you want to call it that. But um, if you're traveling like nomadic fanatic all the time and um, you don't really have a connection to people, man, that is loud so funny to see a, a regular well-dressed lady with this booming music okay maybe she's not that well-dressed <laughs> anywho um, so yeah you really do need people in your life to me in order to be truly happy um, you know there's that saying no man is an island or no person is an island and as a teenager, you know, you go through all this teenage angst and, you know, people drive you nuts and you think, you know what, screw all them. I don't want to be friends with any of them. And I went through that phase for a short period of time when I was a teenager. But what I came to realize over time is that humans need to be social. We need each other. We need to um, have connections. And... Um, it would be lonely to be on the road all the time with no real connection. You know, the inter internet is great. You can sort of have connections and stuff, but I don't know that it's the same thing as um, being around real people in your life on a daily basis, or at least a semi-daily basis. Um, I don't know that it's the same. Some people may say it's it's works for them. I don't think it would work for me just to be satisfied with that. It's nice to have friends that you can talk to um, in a deeper way, in a more meaningful way, that's not limited by the amount of keystrokes you want to put forth or the amount of effort to type something out. You know, a lot of the time I don't have a keyboard with me and I don't have a computer. I just use a, a Galaxy Note 4 phone. I don't have a laptop or anything. All I have is my phone. So even though I might be interested in something, how much I can really type out on a phone? Not that much, um, so I don't. So yeah, internet relationships are, they have definitely, there's they're definitely positive, but I, I just don't think they're the same as real life, meaningful relationships. So if I was to live on the open road, ultimately I wouldn't be happy because, you know, meaning I wouldn't have uh, friendships. Being in the city and being in one area I still have all the friends I had before, except now I live in a van, but I'm still living in the same area. So I get to see them and, and go do things together and uh, enjoy each other. So that was one of the major points. Well, that was one of the two points, loneliness. The other one, being stressed out about parking, meh. I don't know if I really buy that. I think that it could be true. It depends on the person, I guess. Some people, um, some people kind of, I don't want to name any names, but there is a person, more than a few people in my life that um, kind of live their lives in fear or they're always worried about something is going to happen. What if this does, like a co-worker of mine, she's always freaked out about something's going to happen. Well, if it happens, you deal with it. And in the meantime, don't worry about it. That's kind of a attitude I take, you know. Yeah, shit happens. But you just got to roll with it, let it go, and forget about it. And do the best you can, and that's all you can do. Um, man, there's a lot of homeless people out here. I don't uh, come out this way that often, so... Um, but yeah, so if you live your life in fear, um, trying to find, and I shouldn't say live your life in fear. If you are a kind of a person who is easily afraid or easily stressed out or, um, you know, just 
tends to go to the negative aspects of life in certain ways. Finding a place to park is going to be, um, can be a challenge on a nightly basis. Um, but I think also once you do it often enough, you kind of develop a third sense of uh, where to park or where not to. For example, like I mentioned in another video, I always park in front of apartment buildings and I've never once had a problem. And if you do that and you make sure that it's completely legal, there's no sign saying you can't park there and you're there for one night, I really don't see how it's an issue unless it's a bad area and you get broken into and stuff. Um, another aspect of that is it depends, I think, on what kind of vehicle you drive. Obviously, if you have a big, huge Class A or even Class C, life is going to be more difficult in terms of parking. And you're really limited. Um, that's one of the main reasons I have the van that I do. It has a high top, but it just looks like a regular van. And... Uh, it's just easier because I I'm less I don't stick out as much I mean the high top does stick out there's no doubt about it to me um, I was actually a little bit worried about because I don't want people to know at work that I live in a van because of the nature of my job they could let me go and I'm not going to get into all the the weathers and whys of that but it's just a fact so when I decided to get a high top van, it was a major consideration was my work, uh, my employees and co-workers, I shouldn't say employees. I'm an employee, they're not employees. <laughs> co-workers. Anyway, so I was worried about that. So I had my silver van, the 4150, and then the next weekend, and then I've been working on, you know, transitioning from one van to the other, and when I was ready, you know, one day I show up in this big, huge white van. And um, some people said, hey, you got a new van. I go, yeah. And I explain what happened with the uh, with the bumper and ICBC and all this stuff. And they're like, oh, that's cool. What happened to the old one? And I just explained it. But they didn't mention anything about the high top. They didn't, it didn't dawn on them um, that it would be... You know now I'm living in it because it has a high top it doesn't really enter into their mind and uh, so it's a kind of a non-issue I think sometimes we make more out of it than what it is in terms of stealth and all this stuff however that being said you know whenever there's a choice I think stealth is better because it's like erring on the side of caution it's better to be stealthy than not stealthy because being not stealthy is never going to help you but being stealthy can help you at some time or another. Anyways, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Those two reasons why people live, shouldn't say live, leave the van life. Um, loneliness and uh, being stressed out about finding places to park. Again, on the open road, I can see those would be valid. But if you live in a city or in a, in a one basic area you're not traveling around all the time i think those are both easily solvable in my opinion anyways guys i'm gonna finish my slurpee and i'm gonna go visit a friend we're gonna hang out go play some foosball and some pool and stuff so take care thanks for watching have a good night